I'm gonna get destroyed by all these <laughs> all these watch geeks. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Henry Golding here, and I'm gonna be going through my personal watch collection. I've chosen a lot of my pieces because of the love of the design and the love of, in some cases, how rare they are or how difficult they can be to get. But at the same time, like I said, like I love wearing them. The designer's impetus for creating such something so beautiful is to be seen on a wrist. My first watch was when I could afford one, this Cartier Pasha, which I just fell completely in love with from the blue Robuchon to the carved out details on the face. I was sort of drawn to it. It was when I finished this big travel show, pretty much my entire wage for three months of working. And I, <laughs> I, was, I was kind of just like, it felt so right at the time. But thinking back, I was just like, wow, you're an idiot. I wouldn't say that I'm a, I'm a huge, huge collector, but I know what I love and I'm passionate about the ones that I pick because they mean so much to me. It was one of those ones that looked elegant, but also had this sort of sportiness to it. Would you say this is your favorite watch? You could have heard its feelings, but no. But I love it dearly, I love it dearly. So this is the watch that I wear the most pretty much never comes off my wrist to Whole Foods or <laughs> going to like anywhere. Usually I'm wearing this. This is the Patek 5711 steel case, discontinued as of this year. And even if you could find them, the waiting list is five to 10 years, which is kind of crazy. You have to have Patek Philippe actually accept you as a buyer, and especially now that they don't sell them anymore. The steel bracelets are worth more than say like the rose gold or the precious metals. It's something that I would never sell just because I love it so much. But yeah, they, they, they go for a pretty penny now. Gerald Genta, the designer, he did the Royal Oak as well as the Nautilus. It's weird, if you're a watch guy and you see the Nautilus on somebody's wrist, you're just like, Holy crap, that guy's either got taste or he's an extremely lucky man and have spent a ridiculous amount of money. I'm not sure which category I fall into. So. <laughs> the Omega Seamaster DeVille. This is the watch that I wore on my first movie. So this was something that Nick Young's father gave to him whom we don't see sort of in, in the movie. So it almost represents his presence for him, an heirloom that's been passed down to him. So it means a, a tremendous amount. Something like that really grounds your character and, and, and gives you a time and a place. It's a, a manual wind instead of automatic where it has sort of a pendulum creating sort of energy for the watch to consume it through the day. This has a spring, a coil spring. So you wind it to wind the spring and then slowly through the day it releases, giving you the, the, the movement. It's sort of breathing air and oxygen into this inanimate object and bringing it alive. I'm probably totally wrong, but, but that's what I believe is true. <laughs> This is a Tudor Black Bay. This watch means a tremendous amount to me. This was when I was still doing sort of travel shows and running through the jungles and, and going into sort of devastation in, around Southeast Asia. And this was the replacement to the, to the Seiko that I mentioned earlier. So this was the upgrade that my wife bought me for my wedding day. She wanted to get me a watch that I could wear throughout that, that entire period. The backstory with Tudor is that they used to make the cases for Rolex. They have that build quality at a definitely much more of an affordable sort of price range. But for this, on a NATO strap is unbeatable. I literally trek through jungles, up mountains, go diving, and it stays with me pretty much all the time. If you're looking for a watch that's gonna last a tremendously long time, this is definitely one of the best. So this is your classic, classic Cartier tank. Design's been around for, for so, so long. One of the most timeless, timeless pieces I think I have in my collection. A leather band with a small, dainty gold watch is, is one of my favorite things. And Cartier especially have just the intricacies of detail with the blue Robuchon and the sort of faintly blue dials. Very small details you can pick up on in the light. Um, and I like that about watches. You notice all the details as you go in closer. The tank is an absolute classic and I think deserves to be in every man's um, collection because they're not ridiculously expensive again, um, but you get so much wear out of them. This goes with what I'm wearing today. It's one of those like really classic things or you could put it on with 
a beautiful Tom Ford suit with a tuxedo and it wouldn't go amiss. It's like a superpower with some of these watches. It's like it will mold in with anything you throw it at. I don't even know what this is called, but I'm reading it right now. Casio F84W. One of the cheapest watches in my collection, but one of the watches I actually wear a tremendous amount. I bought it in Tokyo whilst I was filming um, Snake Eyes for 800 yen, which is about $8. The draw really was the seamlessness between the body and the strap and how kind of elegant, weirdly elegant it looks. It's something that I throw on. I don't have to worry about winding or having it run out of energy because it's, it's battery run. If I'm like in a rush, sometimes I'll just grab this and, and know that it, it'll always keep the right time, which at the moment it's not on the right time. So <laughs> So it's, it's not 8 p.m. I think it's on, on UK time, actually. I, I wore it in the UK recently. There's a chap, a Mater D, who's at, used to be at the Tower, Tower Bar Hotel, but he was given a watch by Bill Murray because he didn't have a watch. And it was one of those, it was like a Timex or something that he could like easily replace, but it meant so much receiving it from a, a guy like that. The gift of sharing means so much more to someone else than eight bucks, you know what I mean? So, uh, so there'll be a great story behind it at some point, but I, I gotta find the right person. The Rolex GMT Master II, the 2019 version, so it has a Jubilee band, which I thoroughly love. And that was one of the main reasons why I got it, because just because of the band is so beautiful. The fact that they sort of switched over to the ceramic sort of bezels, I think all steel bracelets and, and steel sports versions of any luxury watch that are extremely hard to get. Usually there's like either a waiting list or you have to pay a little bit extra. But I got this for the sheer reason of I've always loved this type of sports bracelet and it's hardy. I beat my watches. I don't like wearing them and being prissy about them. They get scratched, they get scratched. That's, that just adds to their patina. You can see how scratched that bracelet is and I'm really bad with this, but uh, I love wearing it. Um, and it's probably the, the heaviest that I own. Final watch I'm gonna talk about is the IWC Portuguesa. This is the watch that I wore to my first Oscars with a beautiful Ralph Lauren custom tuxedo. Felt a million bucks and this watch was uh, my companion for that night. It's one of the larger watches that I have actually, probably the largest. It's beautiful, classic design. IWC do great watches and, and, and not crazy, crazily sort of out of reach. It has a seven day reserve, which you can sort of see there. So moving it a little bit when you wind it. Obviously with all automatic watches, you can do a sort of a, a manual wind. It has a, a huge window in the back, so you get to see the inner workings. It's one of the brands that have, have been around for the longest time. So you know you're getting the value and the historic value I suppose in watches and it's all about pomp and, and history uh, when it comes to luxury brands and how long they've been around how long they've been innovating uh, but IWC is, is definitely one of the uh, the brands that uh, are consistent uh, I've been telling myself and I've told my wife that I won't <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, there's been a couple um, that have sort of cropped up I would not say no I think uh, to indulge in your yearnings and, and needs for luxury once in a while, you should submit to them if it makes sense and you're financially safe. Watches are an absolute luxury. You do not need them. If you're in a, in a sensible place to be able to afford them, why not luxuriate in them? All right, guys, that's it for talking through all of my watch collection. Amazing spending time with you all and hopefully it inspires you to create, collect, and garner more special pieces in your own collection.